We've spent a lot of time this semester studying linear congruences. The most natural next step for us is to look at quadratic congruences. And we're going to focus on the simplest possible quadratic congruence. x squared is congruent to a modulo p. Depending on the values of a and p, this will sometimes have a solution and will sometimes not have a solution. This leads us to a definition. Definition. Let p be a prime and a be an integer that is relatively prime to p. If x squared congruent to a modulo p has a solution, we say that a is a quadratic residue modulo p. If it does not, we say that a is a quadratic non-residue modulo p. Before looking at this from a theoretical point of view, let's look at some explicit examples. Here are some charts that show us all the squares modulo p for different values of p. You can see that we've taken the reduced residue system zp star and just squared all the terms and listed the results. From here, we can determine whether x squared congruent to a modulo p has a solution by just checking the chart. For example, we can see that x squared congruent to 2 modulo 7 has two solutions, but that x squared congruent to 3 modulo 5 does not have any. In other words, 2 is a quadratic residue modulo 7, and 3 is a quadratic non-residue modulo 5. It turns out that there is a method for determining whether a is a quadratic residue or non-residue modulo p that does not require us to calculate the full list of squares and search for the answers. Theorem. Let p be a prime. The number a is a quadratic residue modulo p if and only if a to the p minus 1 over 2 is congruent to 1 modulo p. Suppose that a is a quadratic residue modulo p. Then there exists an x such that x squared is congruent to a mod p. Since p does not divide a, we know that p does not divide x. Therefore, by Euler's theorem, we know that x to the p minus 1 is congruent to 1 modulo p. By substituting, we get that a to the p minus 1 over 2 is congruent to 1 modulo p. Now suppose that a to the p minus 1 over 2 is congruent to 1 modulo p, and let g be a primitive root modulo p. There exists an integer r such that g to the r is congruent to a mod p. By substitution, we get that g to the r over 2 times p minus 1 is congruent to 1 modulo p. Since the order of g is p minus 1, we know that p minus 1 divides r over 2 times p minus 1, which implies that r over 2 must be an integer. In other words, r equals 2s for some integer s. If we let x equal g to the s, we can see that x squared is congruent to a modulo p, so that a is a quadratic residue modulo p. We can look back at our previous observations and verify that this works. Is 2 a quadratic residue modulo 7? We know that it is by looking at the chart, but we can also use the theorem and do the calculation. Similarly, we can see that 3 is not a quadratic residue modulo 5 by calculation. This may seem a little bit excessive for small moduli because it can be faster to just square a few numbers and check. However, this theorem gives us an explicit calculation to determine directly whether or not something is a quadratic residue. It also gives us a theoretical tool that we can use in proofs. The proof we completed also gives us a quick corollary. Corollary. Let g be a primitive root modulo p and assume that the GCD of a and p is 1. Let r be any integer such that g to the r is congruent to a modulo p then r is even if and only if a is a quadratic residue mod p. The book doesn't discuss this, but there's a very real challenge in using Euler's criterion in practice. Let's say we wanted to know whether 2639 is a quadratic residue modulo 7297. This would require us to calculate 2639 to the 3648th power, which is a number that is nearly 12,500 digits long. So we need some sort of technique for making these numbers more accessible to us. In class, we will discuss a method known as successive squaring, which will make these values computable with just the basic calculator. Thank you for watching this video. I'm currently dabbling with the idea of creating more videos like these for my classes, and I welcome constructive comments that might help me make better videos in the future.